Hello, I'm Brad Wolf, and this is Dire Dan. Today we are talking about low-level adventures. I hear a lot of people say that it's hard to run adventures for low-level characters, and I also know that it's hard for new DMs to get started. So here are 10 low-level adventures for your Dungeons & Dragons game. Our first one comes from 1984 and the basic D&D game, The Veiled Society by David Cook. Now this one was recently made popular again thanks to Professor Dungeon Master over at his Dungeon Craft channel. He recently ran this for his players and renamed it The Reviled Society. It's a great starter adventure. It's essentially a murder mystery and it takes place in a city, which is one thing that's very different than most of your dungeon crawl adventures that are on this list. It also includes some paper craft buildings that you can cut out and assemble to give yourself some city terrain for your gaming table. It's unique in multiple ways and is a great piece of Dungeons & Dragons history. Our next adventure is The Sinister Secret of Salt Marsh. Great name. This one's from 1981, and it's written by David J. Bourne and Don Thurnbull. It's a haunted house adventure with a plot twist, which again makes it different than your standard dungeon crawl. But it's still contained within a house, so it's just as easy to run as a dungeon crawl. If you're playing 5th edition, it already has a conversion to 5e that you can find in the Ghost of Saltmarsh book which not only includes this adventure, but other adventures set around the town of Saltmarsh. Now, while I love the original adventure, I do think Wizards of the Coast marketed the 5th edition book incorrectly. They sold it as piratey swashbuckling adventure, but really it's more of a seaside eldritch horror-themed series of adventures. If you were to run it with that tone, I think the adventures make a lot more sense as they culminate with undead curses and sinister cults and horrible sea monsters. But with all that said, the original not-so-haunted house is a great first-level adventure for new players. The third one on our list is Flint's Axe by Tim Beach from 1992's Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition. What's different about this one is it's set in the Dragonlance setting and references some of the famous characters from the Dragonlance stories, specifically Flint, as players go on a quest to find his missing axe. This one comes with a cool dwarf village as a starting town. This also features a unique monster seen here on the cover, the Tyin. To convert it to 5th edition, you could reflavor a carrion crawler and add the acid splash cantrip to it. It would be a very simple conversion. Another thing I like about this adventure is that the final boss is a minotaur wizard, and the player characters don't have to fight this wizard. It's definitely a situation they can negotiate their way through, which again is unique to have a final boss that you can negotiate with. Now, if you're keeping track, we're moving from edition to edition here, and third edition is the next one on the list. And Sunless Citadel is a great starting adventure from third edition. I played it as a player back in third edition, and I've run the fifth edition version multiple times. What's great about this dungeon crawl is it has two very clear factions, the kobolds and the goblins. And each time I've run it, players have done something different. One time I ran it in a player was a paladin of Bahamut, the good dragon god, and saw all of the kobolds as abominations to his god. So the players eradicated all the kobolds from the dungeon. Another time I ran it, the players allied with the kobolds and focused on defeating the goblins. Another thing that's unique about this adventure is the main villain is a druid, something you don't see very often. You can find the 5th edition version of this adventure in the Tales of the Yawning Portal anthology book. Overall, it's a solid dungeon crawl with a decent backstory and makes a really great first adventure. Numbers 5 and 6 on our list come from 4th edition. And I included two adventures from 4th edition because Reavers of Harkenwold is largely recommended as one of the top low-level adventures for 4th edition. However, it was originally part of a box set that's hard to find at a reasonable price. And if you get a PDF download of it, it 
still cost around $20, but doesn't include most of the assets that came in the original box set. So if you really want to spend the price for this adventure, go for it. What's great about Reavers of Harkonwold is it teaches you how to run a sandbox adventure. It contains a number of different encounters and explains to the DM how to structure them in response to the player's choices. Another cool aspect is it has a victory point system, and depending on how the players perform in the various encounters, they accumulate victory points, and the total number of victory points tells the, the dungeon master how difficult the final encounter against the iron circle is going to be. This allows smart choices by the players to actually have an impact on the success of their final battle. Overall, it's a cool adventure, and I wish at time of recording it wasn't $20 to download, considering the rest of the adventures on this list are far less expensive. Next on this list is Slain Stone, and this was one of the first adventures to come out after 4th edition tried to improve their product line, and included a reasonable amount of DM advice and guidance on how to run this adventure. With that said, that's why it's one of the better 4th edition adventures, because it's intentionally designed to teach a new DM how to run a game. Plot themes and hooks are laid out neatly, and the full color art in this book makes it look great too. It's also only $8 to download from DriveThruRPG as of time of recording, which makes it less than half the price of Reavers of Harkonwald. Overall, 4th edition adventures are largely combat heavy, as that was just the nature of that game's design. And that makes these two the weakest links on this list, but I felt it only fair to include some 4th edition adventures. And now we come to the 5th edition spot on our list, and you really can't go wrong with any of the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition box sets. They are all really good. Lost Mine of Fandelver and Dragon of Icefire Peak both get good recommendations based on their sandbox elements. However, if I had to choose just one to recommend to a new DM, I would choose Dragons of Stormwreck Isle. It has received some criticism for being more linear than the other two box sets, but I think that's actually helpful to a new DM, and what it lacks in open world options, it makes up for with a rich history of the island that helps you establish a tone with the island's draconic nature. To round out this list of 10, we have three independent products that I have thoroughly enjoyed running. First is Claws of Madness by Chris Vanderlinden, and it has some very Lovecraftian vibes. While it, of course, is not an outright horror story, it brings those elements to the adventure. There's a seaside community where people are going missing and returning as strange mutants, and there's a pair of wizards, one of whom is trying to bring forth a powerful artifact from another dimension. The sleepy fishing village of Seastone is a good starting village, and there's a great map provided for your players. There's also an interesting group of dwarves that happen to be visiting the town at the same time as the players. My players, of course, use this as an opportunity to get into a bar brawl. The main plot involves an island monastery, and its history provides clues to what's actually going on so it really rewards the players for investigating. Overall, I found it a great adventure, and my players especially enjoyed destroying the laboratory. Now, there's one thing I like more than Maddening Eldritch Horror, and that's a good fairy tale twist. I love haunted forests and fey trickery and mysterious plots that culminate in a morality play. Everything about fairy tales. Not the Disney versions, but the dark and twisted ones. Those are the things that I love. And Winter's Daughter by Gavin Norman has all of that. Gavin Norman has an entire setting called Dolmenwood. While I've never actually run one of his specific adventures, I've lifted various elements from his Dolmenwood setting for my homebrew world's version of the Fey Wild. I absolutely love his stuff, and Winter's Daughter is one of the best ones, especially for low-level adventures. And it has a very fairy tale story of a fey princess and a human knight and their forbidden love. The adventure also provides the DM with a number of different scenarios and outcomes based on what the players choose to do during the adventure. So there's plenty of plot hooks that you can expand from this original adventure and create more adventures of your own 
or get more of Gavin Norman's Dolman Wood material to build out this forest setting. As of time of recording, you can get Winter's Daughter as either a 5e version or an old school essentials version. However, there are plans for a Kickstarter that will turn the entire setting of Dolman Wood into a game of its own. Now, number 10 on the list is one of my absolute favorites, and it's a one-page dungeon. If you're not familiar with the concept, it's a super light framework all depicted on one page that really depends on great artwork because pictures are worth a thousand words, and you can see so much of the content just by looking at the pictures in the dungeon design itself. So it actually shows you what's in each of the rooms, so there's not a lot of extra text to describe everything. This creates a very efficient design, which helps you running the game at the table. And number 10 on our list, Temple of the Moon Priest by Gildor Games is a gorgeous example of a one-page dungeon. The other great thing about these one-page dungeons is they are completely system neutral, so you can run it with no need of conversion from one system to another. You can just slot in whatever creatures you want to use from the appropriate game that you're running. So this does require some extra prep to decide which monsters to use, but that's a trade-off. You save the time of trying to read somebody else's work and understand how the dungeon works and understand the plot and the layout because those things are given to you very plainly and easily by the artistic page itself. So the prep work is really about choosing the monsters that you want to use to represent the things that are described on the page. So for example, when I run this in 5th edition, I use Bandit, Acolyte, and Drow stat blocks to represent rival adventuring party called the Knucklebones. And since 5th edition doesn't have wear spiders, I just take a Wolf Spider stat block and add immunity to non-silvered weapons. For the Hag, you can easily use a Sea Hag stat block. However, I would highly recommend that you make that a roleplay encounter and not a combat encounter if you're running this for first level characters. For the ghosts of the priest, you could use the specter stat block, but if you did, I would only use one of them, or you could use two or three shadows instead. Another great thing about this adventure is there's the full colored version that you see here and a printer friendly version that you can use at your table while you're running the game. And they are both completely free. Absolutely fantastic. I love this adventure. And there you go. That's 10 starting adventures that'll help you launch a D&D &D campaign with your friends. Let me know in the comments what you think about these adventures. Also, let me know what you want or need to get started as a dungeon master. Because that is the full intent of this channel is to help you Start running games of your own if you aren't already. Like I've said in previous videos, I've been running Dungeons & Dragons games for over 40 years. I absolutely love helping new DMs get started and running their own games and campaigns. So do all the YouTube things and come back for more Dire Den. Thanks for sticking with me to the end, and I'll see you next time.